This was fifty dollars Canadian on AliExpress. Came in uh, about you know six to eight weeks ago. I was quite busy with other things at the time, so I only got a quick look at it. Um, first impressions were that it's not intuitive, and I've got to confess that I had uh, a little bit of a case of buyer's remorse going on. But then I got uh, caught up with those other projects, and I had a little bit more time to uh, take a more serious look at it. Um, the manual helps a little bit, but uh, I got uh, to warm up to it a little bit and uh, felt better about my purchase. It's got potential, it's got quirks, and I'm going to be sharing my findings with you here. But first things first. Like right off the bat, I don't much like these alligator clips on this DC power input. And the cable's a bit on the short side. And besides, I prefer banana plugs. On this style of female banana plug, Just soldering a wire like this would not make for a very strong connection. So I crimp one of these on the end. So these add strength by grabbing onto the insulation. And then I cut it flush right here. And then it's that part that gets soldered on. And then some heat shrink which also helps to tie in the wire to the barrel. And now we got options. We can use uh, longer banana cables. We can still have alligator clips and we can go banana to the power supplies. Uh, this is a much better arrangement. The first screen on Power Up is what they loosely refer to as multimeter mode. And I say loosely because uh, there's no ammeter function to this. And the voltmeter is 0 to 30 volts DC, positive only, no uh, reverse polarity. And it does measure ohms. So here's a measurement across a 9 volt battery. And it can measure OK across this uh, resistance box. Now would you reach for this device if you needed a multimeter? I don't think so, right? You would just go and get a real multimeter. But I can see that if you're in the middle of a bench test and you wanted a quick resistance measurement and this thing was already sitting here, like, why not? So I'm starting with the simple stuff first. These two pins are direct battery voltage output, which is reading as 12.3 volts here. Now the specs state that this is limited at 2.5 amps. Can we trust that specification of 2.5 amp maximum output on those two pins? So we're drawing 0.3 amp, 1.6 amp, there was a little bit of a voltage drop. 2.5 amps, a little bit of a voltage drop. And if we try 6.5 amp, it shuts down. And recovers. I would take all of these current output specifications with a grain of salt. I think that they can be relied upon as a maximum current output without significant voltage drop, but certainly do not rely on these as a maximum current into your circuit. You'd be best to protect that with a fuse through in series with your circuit or a test light in series with your circuit. These two pins give us adjustable voltage controlled by here. It goes from like one volt right up to battery voltage. An example of this is that you could use it as a 5 volt reference when bench testing sensors. Okay, let's pick things up a little bit here. If I use this mode button, I can cycle through to the initial call driver. That's on this pin here. That's for the old school two wire uh, coils, direct drive. Notice also the use of the ground pin here. Now let's go and try this out in vehicle. Disconnected the coil. I got test leads on the coil directly. Engine will be off, key will be off. It's the QDB only that's going to be activating that coil. The QDB is powered by the vehicle battery. 
So first we set our parameters, mode switch, ignition coil driver. I'm going to go for the maximum pulse width, which is like one millisecond, 1000 microseconds. And the maximum frequency, 20 hertz. That coil will fire 20 times a second at its widest width. So that's a, a full uh, heavy duty test of the firing circuit, the driver circuit in here. And for a two wire coil, this ignition output here is the one that we need. Now that coil is firing, but we wouldn't know it. So we're going to add to all of this an oscilloscope. Like that. So it's doing its job, it's firing, and that's a very nice waveform. If we cycle through the mode button, it will take us to an injector drive mode for fuel injectors. Uses these two pins. Let's go in the vehicle and try that out. Just like we did earlier with the ignition coil. The connector is off and test leads are in. So the injector is isolated from the PCM and like the vehicle itself, right? So the only thing that's going to be firing that is a QDB. Okay. It's like as if you're doing a bench test, but we're doing it in position here. Injector mode has been selected. The parameters have been set. We're only using the battery plus and the coil. Uh, don't get misled by this thing that says coil. They don't mean ignition coil. They mean anything that has like a coil in it, like any kind of solenoid, injector, that kind of stuff. That's what they mean by coil here. All right. And then, of course, on top of here, piggybacking is uh, the scope leads. And that's what the uh, waveform looks like. Um, there's no sign of pintle humps or any kind of detail like that. But um, it's an injector waveform. Now that injector driver does fire the injectors. There's no question about that. But uh, it doesn't produce uh, the waveform that you would anticipate. Uh, it's a bit of a quirk there, and I'm going to come back to that. But first I want to discuss that pulse width modulation mode, and then that injector waveform is going to make a little bit more sense. It's going to cycle through the mode button until we get to the pulse width modulation mode. And we have a choice of two outputs in that mode. Here and here. Now the coil has a spec of uh, output of 3 amps. Here, it's a signal. Uh, maybe it'll bear 30 to 40 milliamps. We have a choice of going with battery voltage on either one of these two outputs or going with the variable voltage here on either one of those two outputs. So I want to show you something here. Notice that if I go on the driver side, it's a pull-up waveform, right? From maybe 1 volt up to 12 volt. If we go on the single side, it's a pull-down, right? From 12 volt down to like maybe 1 volt or so. Back to the driver side. It's pull up, right? You'll remember that when we did the ignition coil, we got a very, very nice waveform, right? It, this is a pull down here. We ended up, we started out at 12 volt. It got pulled down to saturate the coil. It released, we got our induction spike, and we got a waveform on that coil that we would have expected. So for the fuel injector, we were on this coil driver. And that's a pull-up design. It was at zero volt. It provided 12 volt. It fired the injector. But we cannot expect the same kind of waveform that you would have in vehicle operation. What they should have done, I think, is for fuel injectors, they should have had another port, just like they have for the ignition coil here. They should have had another port here for fuel injector that would have been a pull-down uh, waveform. On the single side here, 
with variable voltage adjustment and by adjusting the frequency and by adjusting the duty cycle you could create waveforms that are at a low current output like 30 or 40 milliamp that you could feed to the ECM if you dare and substitute values for sensors okay so let's enter the stepper motor mode It can go clockwise, it can go counterclockwise. Useful for these kind of things here. Now I don't have any of those on hand, so I'm going to plagiarize a short clip from the manufacturer's site. And I'd like to add a little value of my own by uh, giving you a demonstration of the waveform that's generated in this mode. But first, um, I don't much like that mess of wires that uh, we saw in that video clip. I think we can do better. So this is the output for the stepper driver. And they give us a couple of spares of these small connectors. Banana plugs always win out here. Okay, So I'm making up this small harness. So I 3D printed this piece, I share the STL, and you make sure that it slides freely, and then a little dab of crazy glue on the wires and on the connector here, and now we have a stepper driver output that we can work with. Nice and solid. Notice A and B positive in the center, A and B negative on the outside. And now for that stepper motor waveform that I promised you. So I'm able to connect channel 1 from the oscilloscope on circuit A, channel 2 on circuit B. And what's really working on in there is that it's circuit A that's working with and against circuit B to provide control motion. All right, clockwise, counterclockwise, Clockwise, counterclockwise. Let's have a look at it. And that's what those two interacting waves look like. Another one here. And here. And here. And the final word. These two buttons were not in stepper motor mode. Okay. Act as pause and play and stop and play. It's very small. Very easy to miss that. But pretty important to know. So I think that if you have the right amount of caution to hold you back, yet the right amount of confidence and knowledge to go forward, this tool can be a pretty good addition to your diagnostic arsenal. Otherwise, it's not. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.